I bought this guy months ago at TFCon. Let's talk about him. T-Man 978, chill review. MP35 Grapple comes in a box that looks like this. He comes with an instruction manual. He has a collector's card. Grapple comes in truck mode Yay. looking like this. He rolls really well. He has optional brakes on both sides that you can pull out like that and bring down to give a more realistic effect when he's using his crane arm that lifts up like this, goes up and down, up and down on a piston right here. And the body is kind of a little bit riggedy. It doesn't clip together as well as Inferno. The hook arm can retract, extend, and the hook goes up this far and down that far. Maybe you don't want a hook, he comes with options. You can grab here, push that down very easily, grab this little shovel, slide that up, and now it has a shovel right here that can bend up that far, bend down that low. It does have a secondary bend right here, so you can kind of scoop down in front of it, but it won't touch the ground. The crane arm does not rotate in any way. Not only does he have that attachment, he also has this one with a little grippy arm. It can rotate, go up and down like this, and it has a joint right here on all four of them. It's not really a stiff grip right here, but I bet you can put something in there for him to hold. I'm able to get him to hold his little solar device thing. If you lift up on this panel right here and bring that out, you can take his robot mode gun and shove it there so he can have a weapon right there in the vehicle mode. Maybe you don't like the all white cartoon accurate grill piece. You can take this off, grab this grill piece and chrome it out, make it look a little bit more realistic like something they actually had in the 80s, I believe. And it actually has two windshield wiper detail right there, which you don't have on this cartoon accurate one. Here's a size comparison against the X Transbots version of his friend Hoist right here. So almost the same length. I don't know. I would imagine the official masterpiece version when I get around to it will be a little bit shorter and well, a little bit shorter and less tall. Here he is with his mold meat Inferno. Pretty similar, pretty similar. But Inferno somehow is a little tiny bit longer. Like their legs are, their legs are different. Like the, even a brake on the side right here aren't in the same location when I put them side by side. So Inferno is a little bit longer. And the internal workings on their back are different. There are a ton of differences. It's amazing how many differences. You'll really notice them when we get to robot mode. All in all, this is a decent representation. It's a great representation of Grapple's cartoon truck mode. It's slathered in paint, which can be a bad thing because I see right here, there is some paint scrapage. I'm gonna try to zoom in on that. Those squiggly lines, that's paint scrapage. So it's just like the Bumblebee and Optimus Prime. Whatever type of paint they're putting on these figures, the G1 figures, they need to do whatever they're doing with the Beast Wars because that stuff doesn't scratch, but this sure does. So be careful transformation i did a bunch of cuts for that opening bit but this transformation i'm gonna try to do seamlessly first thing i'm gonna do is lift that up push this in and i'll actually bend this forward now slide that in we can go ahead and open these right here and open these panels right here detach this from there now we can open these right here, get them off his hand, push this in, which it wants to keep doing anyway, <laughs> annoyingly. Now we can lift this, kind of lift this around that right there. Bring everything out. Bring the wheels back, pull them out. Bring the wheels back, pull them out. 
at this point. We can go ahead and rotate that before we forget. But let's come up to the to the top. Let's grab this panel, flip that up. Bring the head up. Grab this little thing from underneath of his chin. Rotate the head around. Lift this part up from over his head like that. Now we can rotate. I always forget which way these rotate until I start messing with it. Rotate it this way. So rotate it out like that. Take this arm. Take that joint right here. Rotate it down like that. Start lifting this up. And as you're lifting this up, it will bend into the orientation it's supposed to be in. And you can put the arm in there. But now I'm going to keep the arm right here. To keep them out of the way grab this rotate lift it up and put the shoulder into position squeeze it rotate that up there like that now we can rotate separate the legs bring them this way bring it that way take these things right here flip them that way and make sure that that's turned in right there flip this this way and make sure that that's turned in. Now I'm going to just finish the feet. We can go ahead and lift this up. Bring that down for now. This part right here. Start bending it that way. Bend this down. Bend that down. And lift this up to cover it. Now this can snap onto the back of the legs. Shut the foot shut that on the back of the foot bring this out bend the foot down like this now this thing bring this down bring that down bring this on top of it and shut it on the back of the leg shut the foot shut that the legs are done now this guy we need to bend that like this go ahead and rock this hinge up like that and get everything into this orientation and now we need to rotate this inside make sure that this is up get that in there while pushing the crane arm in there and everything should line up right there and now we can grab this and there is a little tab right here bring the wheel down and put this gray part on top of that do that on both sides slide this back slide that back rotate this down rotate this down and what I didn't show was I pulled the shins out a bit but now boom he is a robot yay Close up on the face, Grapple has several face options. Here's the more happy, jovial option right here. This is my favorite. He will probably have this on for the remainder of the video. But you could pull this off. Pop the face off. Grab his regular neutral face right here. Plug that in. Grab the helmet. Slide that on. Push the neck back, and here is his more neutral look right there. So that's great. It's covered in the same type of orange glossy paint right there. So that's cool. Alternatively, here's his secondary face. It doesn't have the lines on there and the eyes. They might be the same size, but here is his more toy accurate head color. He had a black head in the original toy. But sometimes you had this helmet on in the cartoon, so they gave you both options depending on what you want. It's worth noting that this helmet stays on way better because of the paint that it's using. The orange helmet is covered and slathered in that glossy paint on the inside and outside, and it slides off way too easy. This takes effort to get off. Here is his last face option, and I didn't mention this, but the two faces that I use with the two different helmet types, they only work with the helmet types that I showed. But here is his 
screaming, yelling face right there. So depending on what you need, he could be yelling for his his life, or he be, could be angry, pumping his fist at somebody. With the face close up out of the way, let's get a close up look at his body. Like even though they're going for the newer cartoon aesthetic and whatnot. He is still covered in details. He has all those lines right there. It looks like something would attach to that. The back definitely has detail. I like the way you spin this part around to make it look like that's his butt plate. It's like a fake butt plate. But we have all this down there. And one thing, the transformation that I keep forgetting, you need to push these out right there. That's the last step you need to do right there. But yeah, he is definitely great i'm gonna bring inferno out and show you all the changes and differences there are a ton but let's get to this articulation first the head it's on a hinge ball joint it's hard to with this face definitely to manipulate that but the hands can make him look up and look down and you, the ball joint allows for head tilts and what I like about this and Inferno and why I waited to get the Chikartomi version of these two characters is the whole head box turns just like on a cartoon. Like all the other third party versions of these two characters, the head box didn't turn and I, I didn't like that. The arms are technically supposed to stay in there. So it goes around like that on the ratchet as you hear, it goes out on the ratchet. The further you push this out, that connection will lose its placement but when it does lose its placement you have access it kind of gives him like a butterfly joint or it makes him able to bring his arm around and gives you all types of extra articulation so that's great it's almost like they they designed that on purpose i'll give that to them but you can have access to do things like this maybe put some type of communicator in there that you made yourself because he doesn't come with one but he has a tight bicep swivel. Elbows bend more than 90 degrees. Wrists can, depending on the hand, this one, since it doesn't have anything on the inside, can go up and down. This one, not so much, but they both rotate. All the fingers open at once. This one is shaped to for the gun hold, holding option. The waist rotates about that much sort of like their mpb but if you detach the wheels from the side you get much more waist rotation and the butt plate even rotates with it which is cool he has these hip skirts the legs can kick up that far with that can't really kick back too much because of the butt plate but they can go out to the side all the way. Thigh rotation and knee is just 90 degrees. The foot can come up. That's why they molded this like little gap for this thing right there. So it can go up, go back a little bit and he has a nice ankle pivot. Depending on how you look at things, maybe I wasn't complete with the transformation. This arm has a hollow piece right there because he has this sticking out that you may have noticed. But if you open this up all the way, rotate the hand in you can rotate this up bring that out and now he has this finalized look from the cartoon because he had optional missiles that he could put into his arm in the g1 robot but this is darkly colored to match the rest of his dark body but optionally you can pop that off and it's specifically keyed so you can't put this on wrong you put this on Unfortunately, if for me on mine, you can let me know about your figure. This doesn't like to stay on at all. I don't know if I'll have to put some floor polish or something up in there. It doesn't like to stay on, and that really sucks. But with the other options for the face and chest, we can swap things around to make him look a lot more G1 toy accurate with the chrome chest, chrome arm, and the black face, or black helmet, I should say, sorry other accessories if you open this arm up he has a little wrench that stores away under there it's very hard to get that there and to be honest with you to make him use it you need to like plug that into the little gun groove 
which I have not been able to do well, but I'm going to halfway decently put it there and just have it in his hand. So now he has a screwdriver. You can even let him hold it like this. Speaking of guns, it's just plain gray plastic right there. I know that makes some people probably want to cry. Put that into the hand like you do. I hate the way Masterpiece figures hold their guns, but now here he is. Now we're getting to the final accessories. This is his like weather device right there. Paint it from top to bottom. Even these solar panels right here. Very detailed and paint it. This is actually removable so he can like take it out and work on it and I can drop it. Like I was saying before I interrupted myself, here's this little thing that you can take out. This is what he's working with with that screwdriver. But it's just an empty socket right there with a little tiny peg hole. It doesn't peg in there tight, but there you are. It has a little grippy thing right here. And what you're supposed to do, which is difficult, is peg this into his little mushroom peg socket right there. So get this notch over the thumb and basically just shove it in there. It's covered in paint, so the first time will be difficult. But here he is holding it vaguely because his thumb is on the inside of it. So, yeah, it, it doesn't even look right. The last accessory he comes with is this diagram or blueprint for the solar tower. So, yeah, it's just a piece of paper, white on the back. Everything's printed right there. I guess he can hold this in his hand and point at it and talk to the constructicons about it like he did on that episode i do not feel like transforming my x transpots hoist so here's a picture that i stole from tfw from a user named t cracker who looks to have passed away rest in peace from the front here's a comparison with the combiner wars constructicons here is freaking bumblebee beside him right there bad cube trail breaker they're roughly the same height. Here's Optimus Prime. Last thing I need to show off is this comparison right here with Inferno. There are quite a few things different and just like in vehicle mode where he was a little bit longer, he's a little bit taller in robot mode, which is very amazing considering they share a lot of the same parts. Like even the shape of this nozzle is the same. The arms are the same. The legs are different as you can see. A little less, and I did it again, a little less detail molded in in the front of the legs and on the bottom of the feet. The back of the legs, different. Because he doesn't have this block right here on the back of Inferno, his legs are actually able to bend more than 90 degrees. He doesn't have this thing hiding his actual butt, so they were able to use these panels as his butt plate. The tires on the side, are actually placed in a different area. I mean, these you can take out and lift up to there. They don't really, hmm, they don't really attach, but it does stay there if you would, if you would like that. Infernos aren't able to come down on the side at all. You can see certain details are different right here. Like he has that circle there, right here is on him. Of course, this is different. <clears throat> Well, to let you see the back again, different. The way the head box like this secures the back into place, but on Inferno, it's a clip on the back of the head. So Inferno has this extra articulation too. You can actually lift the box up. In order to make grapple do that, you have to lift all that up and that don't look right to be honest, not to me. And the last difference, major difference is the way the legs work. This isn't a crotch flap. The leg actually kicks forward and that moves with it, bringing that butt plate piece with him. So, yeah, his legs don't go out to the side as much as grapple. And the way the whole knee 
King, the knee is similar, but his legs are longer. That's, I think that's the thing. But to show you again over here, this kicks forward, but that butt flip flat piece stays. I mean, you can, no, nah, not nah, the wheel gets in the way, so it doesn't rotate, but it does move a little bit. He does have a stand port right here under the crotch. So if you have a heavier duty stand, like the one that came with black arachnia here, you can get him up in the air. I would suggest something that's a little thicker that he, it won't collapse or break under his weight end of the day though i do think that grapple is an absolute masterpiece i barely have any complaints you can go back and watch my complaints over again i won't bring that back up i like his little accessories that he comes with the optional accessories they all nice i like the optional face he comes with a lot unfortunately that made his price tag a little bit bigger I mean, so if you're lucky, you might be able to find them for cheaper than he originally was when he came out, which I believe was like 139, 149. I've even seen them for 160. So yeah, all these accessories added to that price point. But good articulation, good look, nicely painted. Transformation isn't too difficult once you do it a couple of times. The main difficult part for me until I paid attention to what I was doing was this part right there. If you don't put this back right to put him back in the truck mode, you will not make him back into a truck. So pay attention to what you're doing. Anyway, I can recommend this thing. I love it. it it's great. I do like Inferno better. I think Inferno is superior. He holds together better in vehicle mode and he holds together better in robot mode and he has more articulation. So that's why I think Inferno is superior if you had to decide on in between the two of those. But it's still a good figure regardless though. Anyway, thank you for watching this. Until next time, T-Man 978, out of here. Click, click the videos. Click.